Hi there, I'm Christopher Harrison, Senior Program Manager inside of Microsoft Cloud and AI. And what I want to take a look at in this section is how you can allow a client to send information up to the server to create new items. Now, when you're talking about a REST endpoint, uh, REST is typically going to define the different operations available by the different methods or verbs. So to create new items, traditionally, this is done with POST. Now, the other big thing about POST is that you'll send information up inside of the body. So typically the first thing that you'll do is go grab the body from that request object because that's going to contain the, the, the JSON payload that was sent up. And the body parser that we configured earlier will automatically convert the body that they sent up into JSON for us. Now we always need to validate our data and this is going to take a little bit of code. So to simplify things, I'm going to use some copy and paste. So the first thing that we're going to look to see is that we got a user and a currency. If we didn't, we're going to send down a 400 error saying that those items are required. The next thing that we want to do is to ensure that the, the account does not exist. So we're going to now look at that and uh, if it turns out that there is an account with that name, then we'll go ahead and send down a 400 message uh, to say that the account already exists. Now the last thing that we'll need to do is to ensure that the balance is an appropriate value. So we're going to look to see is there one and if there is, is it a number? If it's not, we need to try and convert it. So we'll check to see if it's not a number. If it's not a number, we'll try to do the conversion with a post, uh, parse float. Now, one thing about parse float is the fact that if it fails, it will give us back a not a number. So we're gonna check that. So basically, this is a few lines to ensure that if they gave us a value for balance, that it's a number and we'll have converted it. If it's not, we're going to return back an error message. Now we can finally create the account. So we'll go ahead and uh, set up the user, set up the currency, set up the description, or provide a default. We'll set up the balance. If we just didn't get a balance value, we'll set that to zero, and the transactions will be empty. Last but not least, we'll go ahead and then store that inside of our database. Now, traditionally, whenever you create a brand new item, you'll return this back to the client because a lot of times you'll have generated maybe an ID or some other information on that account, especially if you're going to be storing this in a database. So now let's go back to our uh, little client here, and I'm going to send a get request here for Steve, and it's gonna tell us that that user does not exist. So this is basically proof that there's nothing up my sleeves here. Christopher does exist. So again, just sort of proving that it, it works. Steve, again, 404, Steve does not yet exist. So let's create Steve here. So we're going to set our method to be post, We'll set our application uh, content type to be uh, application JSON, and then we'll send up Steve euros and a balance of 500. We then get that value back, and now we can prove the fact that Steve does exist. When we do our get request again, you're going to notice that that was sent down. And that is how we can allow for new items to be created inside of our app by using post. In the next section, we'll take a look at a couple of other verbs to see how we can allow for deleting and modifying of data.